So the truth is, I didn't really watch Palace when it came out. I only saw clips of it here and there, and a tons of reviews and heated discussions that compare this drama to Scarlet Heart. You have two female leads who time travel to the Ting Dynasty, princes battling for power. The plots sound almost identical. It makes sense to compare. However. Now that I've actually seen a few episodes of Palace, I mean, why do people even bother? Yes, they look the same on the surface, but these two dramas run on two completely different sets of logic. The things that are done in Palace would probably get people beheaded in Scarlet Heart, and the things people stress about in Scarlet Heart essentially have no value in Palace. Quality aside, the two dramas clearly aim to achieve very different things. Anyway, Palace, the first episode. So as the episode opens, a drama crew is filming a scene with an emperor of the Qing Dynasty, but they are interrupted halfway by our female lead, who just has so much respect for history, I guess. So she barges in, being all young me, and starts calling these people out for making inaccurate historical dramas. Kind of foreshadowing, isn't it? Anyway, jumping ahead a little, Qin Zhuan, that's her name, turns out to be a history nerd who is not that happy with her life. It's implied that she doesn't have a good educational background or any achievement or even a stable job. Her mom is pushing for her to marry a guy whom she respects but has no feelings for, and her future mother-in-law especially dislikes her. So basically, she's available for time traveling to happen anytime. Now today's the day they're supposed to make the marriage engagement known. So Qin Zhuan's mom makes her dress up all nicely and go to their family antique shop to meet this guy. Well, she prefers to stay home. And read because she's, you know, not like other girls. So uh, during this party, Ching Chuan decides to uh, have a heart to heart with her future husband and ask him why he want to marry her. To which he answers, <laughs> "Okay, hold on here. So you initiate the conversation." <laughs> Then the man professes his unconditional affection for you for whatever reason. And then you're like, yeah, you know what? I just, I just had to listen to three Spotify ads to get back to my music. So we'll talk about your undying love for me later. Okay, bye. Dude, are you sure you want to marry this girl? Anyway, in the middle of this party, Ching、uh, Chuan spots a painting of an ancient lady whom she recently has a dream about, who happens to look a lot like herself. And suddenly, the painting just flies off on its own, making Ching Chuan chase after it. You know what? Just,、uh, just listen to your mom and start seeing other people. Okay. So back to Ting Chuan. While she's trying to figure out who the lady in the painting is, a magical portal opens. She falls into a rabbit hole like Alice, and time travels back to the Ting Dynasty. And I mean, I guess having women who wear strap dresses drop on their heads must be a common thing at this time, because these people just start to praise her awesomeness right away without even considering the possibility of witchcraft or sorcery. And then we have this. <laughs> Because otherwise, people wouldn't be able to appreciate Yang Mi's beauty from every angle. I guess. Fast forwarding a little, Ting Chuan gets taken to the Crown Prince Manor to be his concubine. At first, he treats her like a plaything and all that, but then he starts paying attention to her because her knowledge of the future helps him through a predicament with the current emperor. And then this Crown Prince and his head wife just kinda decide that Ting Chuan should stay at their manor forever to help them fight for the throne, and they're pretty sure their plan's gonna work out. Huang <laughs> Shang. Right. So, of course, Ting Chuan attempts to run away a few times, and during one of those times, she meets another prince who happens to save her from drowning. Then they have several unfriendly exchanges. He calls her out for being a gold digger, and then something very important happens to let you know they might have a future together.、Huh? <gasps> and what do you know? They end up riding on horseback together right afterwards. However, on a more serious note, let's go over what Ting Chuan has done so far. So she appears out of nowhere in a cocktail dress, summons a crown prince like he's a butler, and then slaps royalty in the face. How, in the name of the god of drama, is this girl still alive? 